Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of my pastel portrait of Boots the Dog de Bordeaux. I hope you enjoy this. If so, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Also check me out over on Patreon where you'll find my full list of real-time tutorials and lots more. So I was given a really beautiful photo reference to work from, very little editing to do here, and I decided to work on pastel matte paper as that really allows me to capture a lot of detail. And there was so much detail in the photo reference, in the dog's face especially, so that's why I chose pastel matte to allow each and every little hair to appear in the portrait. But I also love the setting of the portrait. It's quite simple on these white tiles and in the photo reference there was a little bit more going on in the background but I decided to simplify it and just make use of the realism of the tiles here in the foreground. I really liked that they added weight to the dog with those shadows and making it seem like he's really lying somewhere. So it gives it a little bit of uh, depth and perspective without it having to be an overly complicated background. So as always, I'm working in soft pastel. Mainly I use unison color soft pastels, but in this piece uh, I have a few Terry Ludwigs thrown in as well. And you'll also see me make use of some soft pastel pencils just for those finer details. So with this medium, you can combine all of the different versions of it from hard through to the very soft sticks in one painting. And it gives you all of the effects that you need from the bigger marks when you're blocking in to those finer, tiny marks when you're trying to create individual hairs. At this stage though, I'm looking mostly for the darkest areas and in this case it's in those lovely deep wrinkles on his face. And I always try to work mainly from my darker values and then layer up through the mid-tones right to the highlights at the very end. So as a general rule I'm working from dark to light. And you can see with the beautiful colours that you get on a dog de Bordeaux, it's all those rich red browns, orange browns, a real wide variety of different warm colours on there. But something that I'm always talking about in my tutorials is being able to capture the direction of the light so that you really get a 3D effect at the end. And that's all about looking at where the light's coming from, trying to use different colours on the shadow side of the face, making your highlights on the sunlit side of the face different. All of these little tricks that help to make your final piece look really 3D and believably real. And that's what I really like to do in my pet portraits especially. So if you're interested in learning some of these techniques in soft pastel, I will be making some longer tutorials from this piece on my Patreon channel. But I've already got lots and lots of videos over there to help, especially if you're looking to paint fur in particular. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was such a beautiful photo reference to get to paint from. These days I really try to be that bit extra fussy when I'm choosing a photo reference or when a client is asking me to paint something as a commission. I try to make sure that we get the best photo reference available to work from if the portrait's going to be possible. And in this case, uh, this one really stood out of the photograph selections with such wonderful expression on the face and also just being able to see so much detail in the fur.
And I've just released a new video to my YouTube channel here comparing two of my favourite papers, Pastel Mat, which is the paper I'm working on here, and also Hannimal Velour, which is my other favourite paper. And the reason I chose Pastel Mat for this project was because of all of that detail. And I find that I can get sometimes quite an annoying amount of detail on pastel mat. It really is quite unforgiving. The marks remain uh, quite visible and I find that it allows me to get much more fine detail perhaps than the velour. But then on the other side I find it quite difficult to make things look nice and soft on this paper. Your marks tend to look uh, quite pronounced. You've got a bit more work to do to really make it look soft. So I sort of flit between those two papers for different jobs and it really does depend on the photo reference and sometimes the subject matter as to which paper I'll use. But on the whole, no matter what paper I'm using, my techniques remain pretty much the same. I'm always working in this way, layering up the colours, especially when it comes to fur, layering it up so that it's believably thick and has real depth to it. And this portrait took me many, many hours of layering just adding layer after layer on each section of the face and no different with the muzzle area. And especially on this type of breed, the muzzle is a really impressive one. Big noses, big jowls and lots of detail on the muzzle. So this section of the dog took me just as long if not slightly longer than the eyes and that top section of the face. And perhaps this part especially would make quite a good tutorial. How to deal with all of those dimples and the holes where the whiskers sprout out from. Also how to make these areas look slightly wet or shiny. So it's always tempting in a portrait like this to spend ages on the eyes and really nail those. And then in a lot of pet portraits that I see I feel like Perhaps the artist got a little carried away once they got the top part of the face done. And sometimes I find the nose area and the muzzle and the mouth need just as much time and attention as the rest of the face. So just starting to bring in some of the lighter colors Keeping most of the lighter colours though on the right side of the face, where the direction of light is coming from. Letting that left side sit in shadow a little bit more. So it's just a long process of building up each little layer, working back over areas, then coming in with the pastel pencils and their nice fine point. I can add some very fine little hairs on top, little bits of shine and reflection. And of course my lighter coloured pencils don't go on quite as brightly as I would like. Then I use the lighter coloured soft pastel sticks. But for these fine adjustments and little thin hairs that I'm adding, I get 
quite enough pigment from the lighter pencils. A lot of the time I hear people uh, complaining about uh, how well the pastel pencils go on top of the soft pastel pigment. But to me this just isn't really a problem as I can get all the marks that I need with the soft sticks and then really just use the pencils to shape things into place. Neaten the edges. So the pencils really are a wonderful tool. But I like to make use of those softer sticks to get my main pigment onto the paper. This lovely paw just jutting out towards us in the foreground. And finally the darkness in under that leg just makes those shadows make sense on the floor. And then with the rest of the dog, I don't want to add just as much detail on the rest of the body. It's as if the camera has really focused on just the face and that paw coming out towards us. Now I can be a little bit more painterly, a little bit looser in the background parts of the dog. And that's really going to help keep our focus on the face mainly. And again, give that sense of depth within the portrait, just like with the tiles. So I work much quicker on the rest of the body. Not worrying quite as much about individual hairs. Laying down the pigment pretty quickly along the rest of the back. And being more concerned about getting the right colour values back here. If I can get the right colour values and how the light is heading this side of the dog, then I really won't need to go into much detail over here. And the hope is that you create that sense of depth and you really trick the viewer's eye into seeing a lot more detail than there even is. But it certainly felt like I added a lot of detail in this portrait. Many hours spent on it and I look forward to bringing you some real-time tutorials from this, breaking down the techniques even further. So thank you very much for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed seeing Boots come together. And if you'd like more information on the materials I use or where you can learn more from me, I'll add all of those links in the description below. Until next time, happy pastling.